flatbed time. So here's the situation. We have a truck, a flatbed truck, and it's going to be tilting its flatbed. It's not going to be so flat anymore. It's going to be on an incline and um, it's going to be uh, getting, uh, angle's going to be getting larger and larger and larger. Okay. Now uh, the big box there doesn't start moving for a while. Turns out that when theta theta there, when theta exceeds, what's my number? 23.3 degrees, the box starts to slide. So we have a situation here of static friction, right? Because it, we're not worried about what happens when it ex when the box starts to move. What we're interested in is this angle of 23.3. At that angle, the box doesn't move. Only if you go to 23.31 or higher will the box start to move. Okay? Only when you exceed that amount. So right here, let's say the situation we've got right here is that theta is actually at that critical angle. So let's say that theta is actually 23.3 degrees. It's not moving. The box is not moving. If we go beyond that, just dude who operates the truck just barely touches the lifter or whatever the button is or whatever it is that makes it go, the box will start to move. Okay, so the situation we have here is the box is not moving. This is a static friction case. Angle is 23.3. And what we want to know is what is the coefficient of static friction? Believe it or not, we know everything we need to know. We don't even need to know the mass of the box. It doesn't matter what the mass is with big box, small box, makes no difference. We want to know mu sub s. We want to know what the coefficient of static friction is here. Okay, well, what do we do? Right? Only, the only formula that we know that has static friction in it is Fs max. Oops. Should be lowercase f. Lowercase uh, f is pretty universal symbol for forces of friction. So f of s max equals mu sub s times the normal force. That's the magnitude of the of the static friction. And this is the only formula we've got with mu sub s in it, but we can't solve that for mu sub s. We don't know either fs max or n. We don't know them. So we can't use that. Now we're going to have to use it eventually. But my lesson is this. This is not, as I've said before, this is not uh, you know, projectile motion days when the formulas were handed to you and you had to solve them for the uh, for the variable you're looking for. This is a situation where you have to figure out the equations first and then solve it. How do you do that? Done it before. We're going to do it again. After this one, after many times we're going to do it. First thing we do: free body diagram. Boom. One step one: free body diagram. And as is usual for inclined plane situations like this, we're going to have our axis oriented so that X runs along the, the direction of motion. Right? The, the, the box, if it were to be let go, would move down the, down the hill. So we're going to orient our axes in that way, which is typical. Okay, we're going to rotate them clockwise by an angle of theta so it matches the truck. So, let's look at our forces. What are they? Well, there's always gravity. You can always count on that one. Right? Weight is down. Right? Normal force is not up. Normal means perpendicular to what? The surface of contact. So, normal force is in the y direction. And finally, there's a static frictional force. What direction is that point? 
you will remember that the static frictional force points opposite the direction the object would move if there were no friction. What direction would that object move if there were no friction? Downhill. Therefore, static frictional force is uphill in the negative x direction. Okay. Now, as before, we have to resolve the, like, the F sub S is in the negative x direction. It's along the x axis. N is in the y direction. But the weight is in both directions. So just as before, we have to break it down into its components. And just as before, that's a pretty simple business. The component facing downhill is mg sine theta. The component opposite the normal force is mg cosine theta. And our angle theta is actually right there. Okay. We have to put all of our vectors into components along the x and y axis before we add them. So there's, along the x axis, we have two forces, mg sine theta and f sub s. Along the y axis, we have two forces, the normal force and mg cosine theta. That's the free body diagram. By the way, this same problem has worked in your textbook. So, you can uh, address, you can look at it there also. And if you're wondering about these components, mg sine theta, mg cosine theta, where they came from, look back a couple videos ago. Okay. In fact, look back to video number, let me see. It's the first time I did this. Was it the, no, toboggan, 5-7-B, when I worked a toboggan problem. Okay. The components of the weight are always the same. Mg sine theta downhill, Mg cosine theta is opposed to the normal force, always on inclined planes. Mg sine theta downhill, Mg cosine theta opposite the direction of n. Second step, you know what to do. Apply Newton's second law. You have to sum the forces in x. You have to sum the forces in y. So let's look, there's our x. We'll do the y's in a second. What are the x forces I just told you a moment ago? The positive x direction, we have mg sine theta. In the negative x direction, we have f sub, actually, actually this is f sub s max. Why is it f sub s max? Because we are at the critical angle Beyond that angle, the box slides. We're at the threshold, okay? So we need to use Fs max, right? This one right there. That equals Max. Now, what is A sub x equal to? Zero is not moving, right? This is static friction. If dude and truck were to hit the lever a little bit more and it were to surpass 23.3, then we'd have box in motion. Then we'd have acceleration. But right now, the box is not moving. It's at that critical angle. So this is zero. Ain't nobody going anywhere. Okay. And now we can substitute this in for F sub S max. Right, F sub S max is always equal to this. So we can now write M G sine theta minus mu sub S N equals zero. That is our X equation. Okay. Now, sum the forces in the Y direction. Equal M A Y. Right, well, you know how to do it. Up here at the top, in X, we unpacked F sub sum of F sum of F in the X direction gives you those two forces, right? Positive mg sine theta minus F sub S max. Now we're going to unpack 
some of the forces in the y direction. Look at your free body diagram. It's all there. So we got the normal force up, positive. Oops. We got normal force in the positive y direction. We've got mg cosine theta in the negative y direction. That equals m a y. What is a sub y equal to? Again. It's zero. Nobody's going anywhere. Either in the x direction or in the y direction or any combination of those two. Nobody's moving anywhere. So, so the normal force is equal to mg cosine theta. Because n minus mg cosine theta is zero. So the magnitudes of these two vectors are equal in the same way that the magnitudes of mg sine theta and the frictional force are equal. Okay. And what are we looking for? So we've done our second step. We've got our x equation here. We've got our y equation there. And now we can solve for the quantity of interest, which is mu sub s. Is it in our equations? Yes, it is. It came in right there. That's what we're solving for. Okay. So let's solve for it. Well, let's see. Um, let's take this equation. We're going to rewrite it right here. Okay. We're going to write, let's see the best way of doing this, M G sine of theta minus mu sub s times the normal force, which is right here. Right, the normal force is mg cosine theta. So we can solve for it and stick that right there. Right, because it's mu sub n, mu sub s times n. So I'm simply rewriting this equation, but substituting in mg cosine theta for n right there. Okay, and all that stuff equals zero. Okay, so let's solve this for mu sub s. Well, we need to get mu sub s on one side, sort of isolate it. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm not going to use green. I'm going to keep with orange here. I'm going to write it this way. I'm going to write mu sub s. I'm going to basically uh, add mu sub s mg cosine theta, this term here, to both sides. mg, mu sub s mg cosine theta equals mg sine theta. It's the same equation as this one. All I did was add this term here, this mess of things here, to both sides. Okay? That's all I did. And then I flipped sides. Okay? So, mu sub s, lo and behold, mu sub s is mg sine theta over m g cosine theta. And look what happens. m g cancels. And you get mu sub s is sine theta. Good lord. There's that big old helicopter just flew right over. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but it was loud in here. Mu sub s is sine theta over cosine theta, which if you do your uh, do a little research, you'll see is exactly the same as tangent of theta. So that's the answer. Mu sub s is the tangent of, of um, 23.3 degrees.
You do your math, stick it in your calculator, you get 0 0.429, let's say 0 0.43. That, right there, is mu sub s. Okay. If, let me tell you now, if this algebra gives any of you some pause, you don't know what's going on, you get lost in the thicket, that's cool, let me know. Okay. Same thing applies. Same rules ever. First thing, free body diagram. Second thing, apply Newton's second law. Third thing, right here. This was really the third step right here. Solve for the quantity of interest. Free body diagram. Newton's second law. Solve for the, solve for the quantity of interest. There you go. 0.43. A perfectly respectable coefficient of static friction.